Welcome to another Community Conversation. I'm your host, Ian Parkinson. With me today is retired Master Warrant Officer Scott Shaw, who's also Sergeant at Arms of the Patterson Legion No. 17. Welcome, Scott. Thank you. Now, in your role as Sergeant at Arms for the Legion, you've become involved in some very interesting veteran support programs. We uh, have several programs that are ongoing. Uh, there's a service officer at every Legion. We have a fantastic one right now. And if you have any problems or questions um, related to service, you can go in and he'll point you in the right direction. He'll find the, uh, the right forms to fill out, such like that. And while that was a fantastic idea and it's, and it's a fantastic operation, um, I found myself lacking in a couple of areas whereby support groups for veterans are far and large, you have to ask for them. And if they aren't being run in your community, you have to go to a different community. Um, so looking around, uh, there was one group started in town here and it's sponsored by the OSI clinic, the operational stress injury course or a clinic or the organization as part of the Legion. And they deal specifically with what's known as PTSD. Uh, they call it OSI in a different light form. So they thought that it would be a great opportunity to start something called Operation Vet Build. And so what this is, is they have uh, gone out, sought out uh, various organizations and various peoples to donate modeling supplies, boats, cars, trucks, tanks, little figures, um, right up to spaceships and uh, offered a, uh, an opportunity for people to get together to build free kits. And while on the outside that this looks like this is you know, arts and crafts having a therapeutic version, which they do, the other half of the coin was it was giving veterans an opportunity or an excuse to get together so that they might have an opportunity to mention something that's bothering them and to sit down with other like-minded people or people with like experiences. Um, and that's not necessarily because of a uh, specific war or conflict. Uh, we have a broad range of conflicts that people have gone through and are uh, needing help or maybe just need that extra little bit or maybe just want to get something small off their chest. So uh, Operation Vet Build was started, I want to say, about five, six years ago here in Medicine Hat. Um, the originator, the person that started up here had moved out of town for work, so I took over naturally. So now I'm operating with that, and I'm also on the executive with the Legion, so it ties in very well with how to coordinate it. And we, we meet at the uh, Legion in one of the rooms downstairs, and we have one Saturday afternoon every month. Uh, typically the third Saturday of every month we'll get together and we don't need any fees. We don't need any signups. We don't need anything. All I want is a point of contact to remind you that, you know, this Saturday to Saturday we're building models. And uh, right now we've got a small group. We have about uh, seven or eight people that normally show up every, every month. Uh, we have a couple of people that show up every couple of months and still some that are showing up once or twice and dribs and drabs. But, uh, it's better to have provided an opportunity to fix lots of people than, than to not fix them at all. And it's not for everybody. If you decide that it's not for you, that's not for you. Um, I've gone through some courses that'll help me in deciphering some of the problems some people might have. Uh, I've taken something called the mental first aid course. Um, this is to identify that somebody is, you know, they're having a difficult time with X, Y, with Z, with this, with that, and to push them in the right direction, give them the, the, the support they need. Hey, I know a guy that can help you with that. Hey, I know an organization that can, that can give you some support on that. I know a group of people that will help you with this and to, to basically identify that this is, this is now or this needs to be in a couple months or it's not a big heal or we can work on that here. Yeah. So there's, there's support for you in those aspects. The other group that we started up is, uh, it's called uh, buddy check coffee and essentially we'll have a daytime event and we'll have an evening event because there's people that still work there are veterans that still uh, have jobs and whatnot so there'll be a daytime and an evening one and it's just to get together and do the exact same thing as you show up have a cookie if you want to talk you talk if you don't want to talk you can soak up maybe you've got some tidbit of information that somebody else can use maybe you've got something in your 
your mental toolbox that somebody else can use and uh, to fix their problem or to hold them over until they can get the proper support. And the same thing applies to them. Somebody could identify that you have, you're having a real issue with, with one thing and you might know the support agency that you can give them a hand with. Now, we were talking earlier. What's your definition of a veteran? Veterans is anybody that's served. And in the confines of our legion here in Medicine Hat, uh, we're in a special circumstance because we're just down the road from Suffield. There's a lot of British expatriates that uh, have decided to settle in, in the area. I don't care what country you're from. I don't care who, what God you pray to. I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care what your gender. You're a veteran. And I'm here to help you as a veteran. And our needs are specific as veterans, not necessarily from um, from one country or another. It doesn't matter, you know, any of that other criteria I mentioned. We we welcome all and we help all. It's uh, this the skill set that's required to help a veteran is sometimes a little bit uh, more specific in mental issues, PTSD, things of that affair. But it's not just because of that. Um, PTSD just doesn't affect military people. It doesn't affect vet, just veterans. It'll affect the average person on the street. It's traumatic stress. And there's all forms of traumatic stress you can be afflicted to. So um, the one we're specifically worried about is for veterans. So if somebody was to walk in off the street and say that I'm part of the Indian Air Force in years past, can you help me out? Heck yeah. Come on in build a model, come on in, have a cup of coffee. If I see you got mental issues, I'm going to help you the same as I'm going to help anybody else. The significant amount of support from all levels of government for veterans. Um, and I think it can be a little uh, confusing, I think, to try and figure out your system. So if a new veteran in town knows he needs help, who does he call? Come down to the Legion, talk to the service officer, go into the front office, say, I need to see the service officer. I'm having some issues with getting a wheelchair lift put in or to find a doctor that'll do it for um, for Veterans Affairs um, billing or, or this. I need to get set up on Veterans Affairs billing. I need to know how to... Um, there's, there's all manners of troubles. If you've got an issue, you've got a question, if the service officer doesn't know, We'll certainly try and find out. Uh, that, in the service officer respect, is probably uh, best for Canadian Forces veterans and for RCMP veterans as well. Um, we're, we're, we're jumbled under the same umbrella. We can't do anything for Canadian support of veterans from other countries, however. Uh, we're trying to initiate some sort of knowledge about British veterans, uh, pensioners especially, for, for, for veterans' pensions, uh, for British forces. Um, that's an uphill climb, despite the fact of how many people we have in here. But we, we do make some headway. We can't help you specifically unless you're a Canadian veteran down at the Legion. But there are several organizations in town that will be able to try and maybe point you in the right direction or put you in touch with somebody that's gone through that yeah. and can point you in the right direction. So don't be shy. Go to the Legion. Don't be shy. Go down to the Legion. Fantastic people working in that office. They're going to point you in the right direction if they can't answer you the question. Yeah, because the Legion's basically started very quickly after World War I as support organizations for returning veterans. Well, the world has definitely changed. And uh, as a veteran, I... I, I see it as a diff from a different perspective. Um, growing up, I thought I knew pretty darn well what a veteran was. You know, I in schools, you did the poppies at Remembrance Day. You went down to the Cenotaph, and you, you realize you had veterans visit your school and talk to you, and you realize, it, you know, I thought I had a pretty good grip on it. I thought I knew what a veteran was and what the cause was and what it meant to me. And then I, I joined the Army, and off I went, and, and eventually I was so into it to go into harm's way. And when you go into that sort of scenario, you definitely come out of it changed. There's, yep. there's nobody that comes out of that unchanged. When you come back from that, you have a different appreciation of everything. And, you know, I, I look back and I say, you know what? I, I said, this guy lost a lot of his buddies and everything. And I didn't quite know 
anybody personally, not a relative, not a family member, not even a person of a friend uh, or, or a relative of a friend that, that had anybody that they knew killed in a war. Well, I came back from this knowing some people that had been killed in a war, pretty good friends of mine. So when I come back from that, I had a different appreciation of it. And so I think it's veterans that have a role in trying to relay that information to people. It's our responsibility to make sure people know these people that have fallen and why they were fallen and, and what, what the cause was for that. Because it's, it's one thing to have an appreciation for it, and it's an, a different thing to have an understanding of it. Yes. And so these veterans groups come out. Uh, the Legion, of course, did a fantastic job. Unfortunately, when veterans used to come back, uh, they wouldn't talk about these things with family members. They wouldn't talk to them about, with buddies or anything else. They would only talk about their experiences with people that had like experiences. And, of course, we didn't have a lot of psychologists. We didn't have a lot of psychoanalysts. We didn't have a lot of this uh, that we currently have to support those needs. Yeah. So they would come back and they would drink liquor and they would talk to people that knew. You know, I might have been a tanker and you might have been a, a, on a, a merchant vessel, but you knew, you understood, you were there. And you would feel safe and confident talking about your issues with that person because they're probably living through the same things. And of course, the liquor helped to loosen the, loosen the lips and to make everybody a little freer. This spouted a whole bunch of other problems, obviously. So our society has shifted. Right now, when a veteran comes back from overseas, there are so many supports. There are psychologists, there are retreats, there are uh, medications, there are processes, there are, there's, there's numerous ways to deal with your problem now. They didn't have that before, so the Legion has moved off and they're, they're sort of at a, at a crossroads now on how to support veterans because nobody just goes to the Legion to get lubed up and talk to somebody. Yeah. That doesn't happen anymore. So we're finding different ways like Operation Vet Build and like Buddy Check Coffees to instigate how to get to some of these supports, how to get to some of the help you need. And these are way more effective than just sitting there talking with your buddies. Yes. I can relay one personal story. Um, I had uh, by marriage an uncle, a great uncle who had gone overseas and fought in the war and was wounded, came back. And when he came back, he wouldn't talk to anybody about it. His family members do very little about what he had done in the war or yeah. any of the stuff that had happened. Um, so years go by, and I end up marrying his great niece. And at the wedding, uh, the, the, the three brothers that were actually in the forces together, one of them was wounded, uh, were sitting at the table. And I, at the time, was a uh, soldier. I was posted to Germany at the time and came back to get married. And when we started going around all the tables and greeting our guests, um, he started talking about his time in the war. And everybody was flabbergasted because he never talked about this. But we understand later that, well, he understands. He was, yeah. He's a soldier in Germany right now. He, he knows what's going, he, he understands, I'll talk to him. And everybody else just happened to be around and it just yeah. blows everybody's mind that, that has that kind of an effect when you have somebody separated by generations that you're still willing to talk to that one person instead of a, a, a psychologist or, a, or any other kind of healthcare provider. Well, I think that's why so many programs are available because I use the term safe space for a veteran to deal with their issues is different for every veteran. Oh, it is. Um, I personally don't don't think that I don't have a stigma attached to going to see a psychologist. I see a psychologist several times in the last couple of years. Uh, there, I, I, I don't. If I need help, I go and get help. If the car is broken, you go see a mechanic. It, it's the same. It's the same element. Um, people need to get over the the stigma point of it. Yeah. And if you're broken, go get fixed. Um, they're very good at this now. They're, they're, they're starting to be very good at that with these programs that are coming out and with the initiatives that people are saying, you know, it, it's not hard. You got here. You mentioned your problem to me. Yep. This guy's going to actually, you know, this, the psychologist is actually going to help you. The psychiatrist is actually going to get you someplace that I can't get you. you. You might even smile again. Yeah, you don't need to needlessly suffer on your own. Find help. 
come on down to the Legion, somebody will be there for sure. That's right. We're, we're, uh, when you're in the forces, you're never alone. Yeah. And so it can be treated the same way when you come back down to the Legion, you're not alone. There's other people that want to try and help you out. Well, thank you for coming in, Scott. Very good. Thanks for hearing. Thank you for watching.